to a full-blown build where we're going to start looking at how far we can push the Turbo Direct IS38600. That's our journal bearing uh, turbocharger with a thick shaft and completely redesigned rotating assembly. It's 600 horsepower capable. It flows about 585 uh, um, horsepower on a flow bench or 58.5 pounds of air on a flow bench. So um, it's capable of around about 600 horse. Obviously with supporting mods, etc, etc. So what we've basically gone and done is this video is going to show you um, a stock standard car on the dyno showing you exactly what this car makes in standard trim off the showroom floor. Then we're going to go and do stage one software, a real basic software uh, um, setup where you're not going to see huge gains, but you'll see gains nonetheless. Remember our country's got really, really uh, poor quality fuel as, as, as compared to the States and Europe, etc, etc. So there's only so much we can do. And uh, the way we tune is really, really conservatively. We are all about reliability, as you've seen through all the other videos that I've done on turbos and how they fail, etc, etc. We don't supply products that are unreliable, nor will, nor will we do the same thing on a tuning platform either. So you're going to see a stock standard car, stage one basic software, and then you're going to see the progress that we've done in terms of installing an IS38600, one of the Turbo Direct turbochargers, with a downpipe and water meth injection. And then we're going to go back to the dyno again and show you what, uh, what yields you can expect. Now remember, keep in mind, standard intercooler, standard charge pipes, standard exhaust system behind the downpipe. So from the downpipe, it's a 76 mil downpipe which goes down into the standard original resonator box and standard system out the back. So it's essentially running the restriction wise from 76 straight back down to the original system. So um, the only thing that you're going to see slight gains from is the fact that there's no more catalytic converter in the system. Other than that, water meth injection and the bigger turbo, but because of the, 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 the limited hardware mods that we've got, specifically flow relating hardware on your charge pipes and your intercooler setup and the exhaust system, and it's obviously inlet and outlet, uh, we're going to be running really, really low boost, approximately 1.4, 1.5 bar, and uh, we'll obviously have tuned the setup. I'll go into one or two logs to show you exactly what's happened there um, in terms of uh, ignition retard. We're running, we're running really, really uh, low timing as well, run right about 7 or 8 degrees advance, which is nothing. Um, and we're running that on 95 octane fuel, which if you want to compare that to the States, is more than likely 90, 91, 92, 93 octane if you want to do a, a direct uh, comparison. And then the only other upgrade that we've gone and done, obviously because of the size of the turbocharger's compressor wheel, is an air intake upgrade. So we've got a 4 inch inlet going down to the air inlet pipe, which is an upgrade into the turbocharger and then obviously the rest of the hardware is, as I've just mentioned. So check the video out, like, subscribe, let us know what you guys think. Keep tuned for more updates on the build, as in when we replace the exhaust, the charge pipes, the cooler, etc, etc. Eventually this engine is going to land up with a full build. We're going to be using Mali pistons with the Mali agents in the country, Mali Motorsport and we're going to be using uh, um, forged rods, ARPs throughout, and obviously a couple of other mods as well. We're almost finished with the development of our uh, billet intake manifold, uh, billet components with a welded together fabricated intake manifold, uh, which will be a direct bolt-on. We're going to be installing bigger injectors. We're going to be doing quite a lot of other uh, hardware upgrades as well, obviously because we want to start seeing how far we can push the turbo. Once we've maxed the IS38600 out, we're going to be installing the IS38700, which is your GTX Gen 2, GTX 3071 Gen 2 inside of our larger AR turbine and compressor housings. We're going to max that out and then we're going to install the swirl adapter with some of the range of Borg Warner turbochargers, which we're obviously really excited about. And um, once that's basically done, we'll move on to the next project. So hope you guys like this. Um, it's not complete yet. There's a lot more to come. It's low boost. There's limited hardware upgrades. Keep that in mind. See you next time. Okay, guys, we're here at uh, GeForce with uh, one of my friends, Gareth Jones. He uh, 
he's been kind enough to allow us to um, use his workshop and uh, one of his guys is going to basically help us to do the installation of the AEM uh, water meth kit. This is pretty much your 30-3300, it's a stage 2 progressive kit, comes with a pump, complete harness and everything you need to basically do a complete installation with three different nozzle sizes, a 1.15 gallon tank, about a 5 litre tank and uh, we're going to get right to it. Uh, we're going to be using a slightly larger bottle, uh, it's eight and a half litre, so it's about maybe a, almost a two gallon tank and um, we're going to do the installation step by step and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So this is Mr. Jones himself, uh, the man's workshop that we're at, we're going to be doing the installation of the kit. He's a little bit camera shy, oh no, he's actually busy with something. Um, but anyway, thanks Gareth for letting us use your place and some of your uh, guys to help us do the installation. First things first, just take out the airbox. And uh, this is basically a, a stock Golf 7.5. And uh, it has a stock airbox and a stock uh, air intake with a IS38-600 uh, hybrid turbocharger, that's our fixed shaft turbo. That's installed, stock intercooler at the moment. First thing we're doing is going to be doing uh, water meth and obviously doing some tuning and some software. And uh, once you've done that, obviously we'll share all the dynographs with you, but uh, let's, get, let's get going with the AEM installation. Okay guys, so we've taken the engine cover off, we've taken the airbox out, we've taken the battery uh, tray out as well as the battery. There we've installed an air intake pipe, which we're gonna be uh, welding on a complete 100 mil or 102 mil four inch intake. And um, we are now pretty much ready to run the power wire, which we've already run from the back actually, uh, for, for the water meth system, which comes up into a little lug over there and installs onto one of those, uh, those positive supplies. That goes all the way back to the back of the car. It obviously tees into the control unit and then the other side goes back to the pump. So that is lights, ignition, power, pump and bottle, all laid out, ready for installation into the car. So we've got back seats out and some of the trimmings. Once that's out, obviously we're gonna run all the wiring. I already have a tank installed with a pump from a different system, which we're gonna basically be removing and installing the AEM. So some of the work has already been done, but we'll update you step by step as we go along. Okay, so we've installed our power wire, which is a little fuse adapter. Which this ignition is your, it's connected directly to ignition. That is what it looks like. It's a little adapter which plugs in, and from there, this wire runs into the main harness and powers up your controller. Hey guys, so what we have now is obviously the, the controller. We've flipped the cubby hole down. And obviously that's where the fuses are, just behind the cubby hole. We've uh, taken the vacuum line together with the harness. Obviously those wires are gonna run to the front and the back of the car. And uh, we are going to take this controller and we're gonna leave this inside of the cubby hole. We've made a small little hole at the back of the cubby hole over there, which comes into the front. And uh, the controller will basically mount onto this harness here and remain in the cubby. So uh, we're going to be running these wires now to the front of the car, to the battery obviously, and to across to the other side. So we've got your uh, lighting for your auto dimming, and then uh, the rest is going to go to the back of the car for the pump. All right, back into the boot. We have uh, methanol already in the tank, pump installed, and we have a little sensor over there, a fuel level sensor. There's the wire coming to the back. I'm going to connect that up now install the tank which is going to be mounted to the backboard as you can see and more to come alrighty so we have the bottle installed and we have the wiring as well as our feed line going from the pump and the tank to the front so that's all set up nicely everything's tucked away nice and neatly we're running a ground wire in the front. We used to run the ground over here, just behind the seat, that's now changed. We're running it in the front. And there's our line with all of our wires running from the back of the car 
all the way to the front. So that there is uh, installed all the way through there. Everything's tucked away nice and neatly. Opening the cubby hole, you'll find the controller over there. Guys, so while we're busy doing the water meth installation, we started making up the uh, 100ml intake, which is obviously custom. There is the upgraded air intake, and uh, this is basically the beginning of the 100ml intake, or 102ml, 4 inch. We've got a spare bung over there, or a spare opening that we've threaded for uh, a second water meth injection port. And uh, yeah, that's the progress so far. More to come. Let me just put this in here. That's cool, eh? Yeah, looking good. An angle slightly down so we can get the air from the from the intake. Yeah, that looks nice. And then next step is to get ourselves in front here and open those ports up. So we've got some ram air, or some form of air feed to the filter. Okay, let take it. So here's the mock-up. So it goes into the IS38600, which is the thick shaft journal bearing, 600 horsepower capable turbo, upgraded air intake, and modified and welded onto a, a four-inch inlet. Custom built on the car by GeForce. One of our good, uh, our good customers as well as uh, friends. Of Gareth Jones and that's basically what we gonna have the final product looking like we get the badge welded on and we will then clean this up with a, uh, a coating and we'll show you the final product shortly is installed. You can see the lines for the boost and there up onto the top of the intake manifold and obviously here's the, the line for the injector which is going to go down onto the boost pipe. This is the old kit that we used to have, that's the feed and uh, there's the IS38 600 thick shaft. Customs, one of our good mates and uh, loyal customers 
Gareth Jones, uh, he does all of the fabrication for us. Any customer that contacts us looking for fabrication, we obviously pass over to Gareth. His work is impeccable. Uh, he works very closely uh, together with us. Obviously, we supply him with proper product and not these Chinese imported components. Um, he's, he's a really reputable guy and he's very well known for building all of the top, uh, the top cars in the country. All these cars that are running 10s, low 10s, I'm talking about the Golf 7Rs and the S3s, etc, etc. 99.5% of those cars have gone through Gareth Jones' shop. So thanks Gareth, really appreciate the help and uh, giving us some time for you guys to do the, the installation of the AEM kit while we do some video uh, footage. Guys, so we're in the, uh, the Golf 7.5. We're uh, running some logs through the OBD, and uh, we're going to do a run. And let's see what happens. Okay guys, this is the log from the last run on the dyno, 250 wheel kilowatts and about 440, 450 newtons, run about there, can't remember the value. So uh, what I want to basically do is just go over RPM, throttle position, and uh, these four columns, which is ignition retard, and then there's a reference for the air intake temperatures, that's turbocharger rotational speed. So I'm just going to scroll down quickly and have a look at these four columns here, just to see whether or not there's any numbers in there, any ignition retard. All the way down, there is absolutely nothing. So I'm very happy with that. So when we started, uh, obviously let's just go over here, have a look around the, the throttle position over here, where you've basically got, where it comes up to 86%. 86% is essentially when your foot is flat before the kick down. Obviously we're running it in manual mode in fourth gear, so you will never see 100% over there. Two and a half thousand RPM or two six, a foot is flat already. 35 degrees air intake, and that gets lower and lower. 34, as you can see, 35, 34, 33, okay, 86, sorry, I was changing gears there. So here we are foot flat from 2000 RPM, 33 degrees, 32, as you can see, 31. So the AEM water meth is engaged as we go down all the way through the RPM range there. And I'm really happy with this. So this is a, car which is a standard engine golf 7.5 r we are running with the turbo direct is 38600 at 1.4 bar boosts and we have got a 76 mil downpipe going back into the standard resonator the 60 63 mil uh, um, silencer box and everything at the back of the car the original unit and we are running a stock intercooler and we've got an air intake modification so two uh, four inch 102 mil uh, air intake pipe which connects up to the turbo and we have got some software on the car. That's it. We've got AEM water meth, as I've mentioned. We've got uh, no intercooler upgrade, no charge pipe upgrade, and no full exhaust as yet. 1.4 bar boost, not a bad result. No uh, ignition retard. Look, it's, it's low, uh, low boost anyway, so we didn't expect it to see anything there. But um, yeah, those are the results. I'm happy with the logs, and we'll carry on doing some more tuning.